Good evening. Thank you for tuning in to Veterans Voices. Tonight, we're excited to talk with a panel about their experiences during a trip to Washington, D.C. to visit the memorials created in their honor with an organization called Honor Flights. We'll be right back. Good evening and welcome. I'm Nathan Johnson, host of Veterans Voices. The mission of Veterans Voices is to explore the experiences of veterans, important issues that affect the community, and to connect vets and their families to supportive resources and events. If you're watching tonight and would like to share an experience or ask a question, please send us a message through Facebook at Veterans Voices One, email veteransvoices at contracostatv.org, or call us at 925-313-1170. Tonight, we have the shadow box of former Veterans Voices guest, Virginia Wimmer. Senior Master Sergeant Wimmer served with the 41st, 451st Expeditionary Aeromedical Evacuation Squadron. Most notably, she was deployed to Camp Bastion in Helmand Province, Afghanistan, where she ensured that over 400 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines made it safely home after being wounded on the battlefields. She retired from the Air Force in 2012 after 26 years of honorable service and is currently the San Joaquin County Veteran Service Officer. On tonight's show, we'll be talking about honor flights, the experiences of our veterans' guests, and a flight guardian. Honor Flight is a nonprofit organization that facilitates cost-free trips for multiple generations of veterans to experience our nation's most valuable memorials. Best of all, it is a gathering of America's veterans in our nation's capital, alongside guardians and family members, creating special memories as they visit the memorials built in honor of their service. Before we get started with the guests live on our set tonight, we had a chance to pre-record a phone interview with Carl Stewart, the founder of Honor Flights Bay Area, to learn more about the program. Let's watch. Hi, we're here with Carl Stewart, retired Navy captain and president of Honor Flight Bay Area Foundation. Carl, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, my pleasure, Nathan. Uh, I always enjoy talking about the Honor Flight program and what it does for our local veterans. Great program, and we'll talk a lot about it. But before we begin, Carl, just say a little bit about your military service, please. Sure, Nathan. Uh, I commissioned in 1982 as a Supply Corps Reserve Officer with the Navy. Uh, the Supply Corps is a staff function that supports uh, the line officers. I spent 30-year career as a Reserve Officer. I had five commands, my last being the Naval Supply Center at Pearl Harbor. Wow. Incredible service, sir, and I honor that. Thank you. So let's talk about the Honor Flight Foundation. Give us a little bit of a historical understanding of when did this organization begin and why was it formed? Yeah, good question. Uh, the actual start of Honor Flight program began back in 2004 when the World War II Memorial in Washington, D.C. was completed and a small group of local citizens from the Midwest took some of their local World War II veterans back to see the memorial. They had such a good time and experience that when they returned home, they decided to formalize a program, which eventually began, became to be known as Honor Flight Network. Uh, the program now consists of 132 hubs nationwide in 46 states and has transported over 200,000 veterans to see the World War II and other memorials in Washington, D.C. Wow, that's fantastic. So it's been in operation now for about 15 years. What typically is involved in an honor flight? I know it's a visit to the World War II memorial, but uh, are there other things that a uh, participant might experience? Yeah, exactly. Uh, the, uh, the genesis of the program, of course, was to see the World War II Memorial, but there is so much to see in Washington, D.C. that the program has evolved. Now, for a group that's traveling from the East Coast, say from Virginia or Maryland, it's a day trip. Mm. It's a bus trip, but 
from the West Coast, mm -hmm. like what we have organized, it's a three-day experience. Mm -hmm. One day just to get back to Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. a day and a half of about 10 memorial stops, mm -hmm. and then the half day on the third and last day is a transit time back to the West Coast. Well, so a lot is involved, a lot of planning happens. What, how many of these flights does a typical foundation like the Bay Area chapter, for example, how, how many of these flights do you, you, do you do every year? Yes, you know, it depends on each hub. Each hub has a different uh, type of schedule. Uh, when we started out in 2014, September, our first uh, maiden trip, we took 25 veterans, 25 guardian escorts, and we had uh, three staff members, a trip leader, assistant trip leader, and a medical person, typically a uh, registered nurse or a doctor. So we always have medical staff, and we always like to have our guardian escorts uh, if they're first aid trained at least. We love having uh, law enforcement and also uh, our firefighters because they're typically trained in first aid. So that's our group composition. We started out with uh, five trips a year, three in the spring, two in the fall. Those are the best travel months. And because safety is the number one priority uh, for our veterans that we take back, we select the best travel months. Now, after several years of five trips a year, we've determined that uh, we're burning out perhaps some of our volunteers. So we backed off to two flights in the spring and now two flights in the fall and we're right now spinning up our 22nd trip coming up in september and we've transported uh, 532 veterans over wow. the past 21 trips incredible well a big thank you to you and your volunteers for all of those trips that you've done and I, who's eligible for this you mentioned world war ii veterans um and you mentioned escorts uh, is there any other criteria for veterans who are eligible for an honor flight and what is the criteria for being an escort? You mentioned someone familiar with uh, first aid, um, but could it be a family member or a, or a best friend or something? Yeah, good question, Nathan. Uh, first, as far as the veterans, uh, although the program started out as a World War II-focused uh, program, it has now evolved, especially since we're basically running out of World War II veterans uh, who are capable of traveling uh, we've now moved into the Korean War era, mm -hmm. and we've actually taken some Vietnam era veterans back with us. Uh, the oldest veterans go to the top of the list. They get priority. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they don't actually have to have served in a combat zone. Mm -hmm. uh, if they were a veteran mm -hmm. or if they are a veteran, mm -hmm. then they are basically eligible to go. That's great. Uh, the actual guardian escorts, we prefer to have family members to go. Mm. But if not, we have a pool of volunteers that go for this tremendous experience, not only for the veteran, but for the guardian escort. Uh, we really do like family members to go. Uh, typically, we like, uh, for safety purposes, under 70 years of age for a guardian escort. Mm. Okay. Uh, but uh, they do not have to be medically qualified. It's just a nice bonus that we have often with our, our first responders who would like to go on these flights and support us right. as guardian escorts. Now, of course, the trips are free. We raise uh, funds and donations from uh, companies and individuals. Mm. We are not government funded. We do ask the guardian escorts pay their own travel expenses, mm. which we've been able to keep at $1,000. Wow. And that covers airfare, the two nights at the hotel, the bus, all the meals. It's, uh, it's just an unbelievable experience. It's a 501c3. Uh, this is considered as a donation for tax purposes. Well, I just have one last question because we only have a few seconds here. And if a veteran is interested in an honor flight or if someone is interested in being a volunteer, where can they start? Yeah, uh, good question. Uh, with that, you can go to our website, Honor Flight area.org and you can see all the pictures from our previous flights under tours and there is an application button there that uh, veterans guardian escorts or just volunteers can apply directly online great 
Captain Stewart, thank you, sir, for your military service, and thank you for your continued service as president of Honor Flight Bay Area Foundation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nathan. Welcome back. We're now joined by veterans Gil Verdugo, Bill Meyer, and Phil Wire. That's a tongue twister, gents. <laughs> well, welcome to the show, gentlemen. And you guys look very sharp in your t-shirts tonight, representing Honor Flight. And I'm very excited to have this conversation with you tonight about your experiences. Uh, but before we begin in sharing about those experiences, can you say just a little bit about your military service? OK, yeah, yeah. Well, I joined the Navy uh, just before I finished high school. Uh, I didn't get my diploma until later, much later. But anyway, uh, I joined the Navy, uh, went to boot camp. They sent me back to Oklahoma, of all places, for training in the air, uh, air branch of the Navy, and then uh, proceeded to the East Coast and started my flight experience there. And uh, from there, uh, I did such a good job, I got called back for the Korean uh, exercise. Great. Thanks, Gil. OK. Phil. Oh, yeah. I talked my mom into signing the papers when I was 17 and a half. She says that you finish high school and then you can go to the Navy. And I said, they'll let me do that. <laughs> well, <clears throat> two days later, we, she signed the papers. Two days later, the Navy called me up. Mm. So we went downtown to get our physical. My mother followed the bus and said, he's not going to the Navy. <laughs> and that turned out to be that I served almost two years in the Navy. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Bill. It's my turn. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I volunteered, if you will, while I was in, just starting college in the University of Toledo. And I volunteered, went to Indianapolis for my re entrance into the service, went to Biloxi for Mississippi, Biloxi, for the um, training, the initial training, and then back to St. Louis, Scott Field, and ultimately into Frankfurt, Germany, where I used my talents as a typewriter man. Great. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for your service. It's an honor to have you here tonight. So we want to help our audience understand the Honor Flight Program. So this is an experience that all of you have shared in. And uh, it seems like it's really been an, a really impactful, meaningful experience in your life. Um, who, who talked you into doing an honor flight? Who first told you about this program and convinced you to say, sure, I'll sign up and I'll, I'll fly on a plane all the way to Washington, D.C. and check out some memorials? Well, at one of our meetings with the American Legion, the commander asked me if I'd ever heard of the honor flight. And I said, no. I said, would you, would you like to go? I said, it sounds like a good idea. So uh, what do I do? And so they put me in touch with the foundation. And uh, I then uh, submitted my name, and uh, I was accepted. I thought, boy, I, I, I think it's going to be great. So uh, I was quite flattered and honored to be asked to go. Now, Phil, you didn't seem to understand too much about what the Navy was going to expect of you. And uh, what about the honor flight? Did you know what you were in for? Did you know that you were going to go for three days and no. be pushed around a wheelchair for all <laughs> over the place? No. Uh, we have a retired captain from the Navy uh, in our uh, complex. And he's the one that uh, got us to uh, sign up. Uh, uh -huh. And I didn't realize what a trip we were going to take. Mm one of the finest trips I have ever been on. Mm. It's something I will never forget. Mm. Yeah, and wow. there were so yeah. many Incredible. things that we saw there in such a short period of mm. time. It was fantastic. Yeah. I hope that every veteran can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope so as well. Just great. Yeah. yeah. And what about you, Bill? Your son went with you, and we'll talk to him later, but it was it his idea or yours? Well, first, should be aware that my brother-in-law uh, from Michigan mm -hmm. made one of those one-day in-and-out trips to the thing and told, wrote back or called back, told us how good it was, and it was even better than yeah. even he said, in my estimation. But he recruited us to it. We got involved with the local people, got my son involved, and we were able to make the trip back in September of, I guess, 17. 
So this trip was a couple of years ago then? Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, it was. Okay. So we actually have some video footage uh, that your son Tom took. And from what I understand, Bill and Gil, you guys were both on the same trip back in 2017. Yes. Phil, you came a little bit later, it sounds like, later on that year when you took your trip. You guys were on Flight 12? 17. That? Flight 17? Wasn't it? Yeah, it was no. 17. One. No, we were on, what, 14 or 15? Yeah, I think it was 14. 14, yeah. Okay. okay. I think, okay. yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. So we're going to take a look at this video here. And gentlemen, please provide us with a little bit of narrative of what took, what took place here. Can they slice? I so, think it should be interesting to note that the bus uh, guy who was telling us about Washington, his name was, his last name was Bozo. Bozo. Okay. Bozo. And it so, really was. So Bozo was driving the bus. No, he was no, to he talking. Was kind of a narrator. Okay. Yeah. You guys have a lot of faith. So this is somewhat of a tour that you're getting. Are you just getting off the airplane and getting on the bus no. and heading to the hotel here? No, we went to the hotel where we flew in the previous evening. Okay. Started early in the morning and went all day. This okay. is going into the World War II memorial, and there's some uh, some of the uh, military that's there to greet us. They saluted us. Gee whiz. Oh, fantastic! So you guys got quite a welcoming then. So. And these are these are all each a column is represents one of the states of the Union. You know. Okay. Yes. This, all the way around this fountain. This memorial looks pretty big, Phil. Was it pretty impressive? It is impressive. It is impressive. Yes. It wouldn't fit a football field. Wow. Yeah. And so, how, so what was it like when you first saw Washington, D.C., and the memorial like the one here for World War II? Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, it it's hard to believe. Too, Had you ever seen it before, uh, Phil? No. No, so this is the first time. So you're getting to see the Washington Monument here. Uh, now, it looks like the, the group is pretty large. Are you? How many people are you there with? I was there. Uh, we had, I believe it was 26 uh, veterans yeah. plus the, uh, yeah. the, the guardian, yeah. the guardians. Okay. okay. And this is the tomb of the unknown soldier, it looks like. Did they actually yeah. do the ceremony when you were there? Yes, they did. I think, yeah, there were three of our members uh, had a, uh, some floral uh, presentations there, yeah. Oh, they hurried it up. What are, we, what are we looking at here, gentlemen? This is Arlington Cemetery. I think they might be walking by, uh, I think that was a plaque of, of that World War hero, Audie Murphy. Okay. I took a picture of it, but that didn't show it there. We're coming up to here. This is a Lincoln. woman's uh, memorial is that there. Is that a woman? Yeah. Women, okay. yeah. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. Everything looks very beautifully done. It looks like the weather was great. Was it uh, pretty nice weather? Any, any, any storms <laughs> or any? No, no. no. the weather was day. perfect. Weather when day. I was there, you couldn't ask for better weather. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looks like everything was, was top notch. I understand you guys stayed in some very nice hotels. Oh, yeah. Very. oh yeah. The food yeah. was good, I heard. <laughs> and it was great. <laughs> and they treat yeah. you, we were treated like better than the president. Oh, yeah. So what are we here? Is this some opportunity to purchase some merchandise? Uh, no, to this is a, a little little mall, and they show all the ladies. Yeah, uh, that's that a display the of the memorabilia uniform. of okay. the women's activity. Great. What are we looking at here? Th that's the Korean Wall. That's and the Air Force Air Force Memorial uh, I'm hearing. No, no, no. no that, that's, that's the Korean. That's, that's, that's part Korean. of the Korean Wall. That's part of the Korean and if Wall. If you look, okay. yeah. The now, this is the Air Force. There's yeah. the Air Force. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, it, what is it, basically two tall statues? Or three of them. Yeah, three of them? Uh, okay. Yeah. But look at the spears going up. They're I reaching see. for uh, the sky. <laughs> they Aim they, high. They're yeah. high, yeah. You can okay. see. And what are we looking at okay. here, gentlemen? Looks this like again, the Korean memorial. Yeah, there are the figures in the, in the jungle there. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, the sun is hitting them there. Just perfect there. Mm. What did they say? Those are bronze? Th this is the uh, Vietnam bronze. Wall, and uh, there's somebody getting a ruby. And I did that because I had a friend whose son was killed there, and I, I took a ruby. Now, Bill, it looks like everyone's in wheelchairs. Were you in a wheelchair? <laughs> Most everyone was, one way or the other. We okay. were kind of required because there's a lot of walking involved. Okay. And yeah, was, yeah. was it that your guardian wow. mostly kind of helped you Always. push yourself yes. around? He that was, probably helped to get through a lot of the day. I would. He was guaranteed <laughs> an effort on our part. He yeah. had to stick with us. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What an incredible experience. So share something else about just how quickly this tour moved. You had a lot to see. Did it, was it an early day and a late evening? or Did they feed you any food? Or? <laughs> yeah, it, it was an early day. 
Yeah. And we started with breakfast, of course. Oh, yeah. And then we got oh, yeah. the buses and... Mr. Well, the bus Bozo ride was exciting. Over. I think the bus was exciting even for the driver. He said he, he never was able to run so many red lights and go drive against the traffic. And they cleared the Washington, D.C. traffic. They had motorcycle police ahead of us and motorcycle wow. behind. It so was they amazing. they knew you were coming. Oh, yeah. They, they, oh, they were prepared. Wow. It was yeah. nice. It was really good. And, go that, ahead, and that policeman on the motorcycle ahead of us is mean. <laughs> there was a car in front of us and he says get out of the way mm. and the guy says no place to go over the curb go over the curb oh wow <laughs> and then their the, uh, city bus was pulled to the side and there he gets up and he hits the side and he says get it out of the way get it out of the way i think Boy, he used different language didn't he yeah. well yeah the, the yeah. layout language was a little rough wow but and he stood our, our cop stood about uh, six foot three, six foot four, <laughs> and he was, I tell you, he yeah. got everybody out of the way. Oh, wow. yeah. they, you they, don't they, stop. They took it seriously. We didn't stop for anything. They didn't stop for anything. Wow. Yeah, on the freeway, down in the city streets. And that was all day long. You had All day. Wow. And, the, and the one in the back was a, uh, uh, I think it was an army officer in a car. On there, mm -hmm. and he rode in the back, so nobody got up close to us. Yeah. What, what was the camaraderie like when you were on this trip? You're you're with other veterans, maybe some who have been who had served during the same time as you. Was there a lot of sharing in stories and experiences? I don't think we had much time for a lot of sharing. No, that's right. No, no, we were busy, 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 yeah. moving a lot. Yeah, yeah. So they, were, and they yeah. wanted to make sure that we got to see as many of the memorials as possible. That's why. They had they cleared all the traffic in a way to get to each one of those. Now, when you would get to a, each memorial, would someone be there to explain something about the memorial, or was it just kind of a self-exploring uh, opportunity where you could just kind of go to each part of the memorial that you wanted oh, to see? Yeah. Pretty much self-explained. Okay. I don't think we had any private. Yeah. Guardians okay. there. Well, the guardians were a big help because they helped unload the wheelchairs for those that needed them. Yeah. And those of us that we yeah. just pushed the wheelchair, so we'd have the place to sit down every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> because there was a lot of walking involved yeah. there. Yeah. Bill, what was the most impressive memorial? Well, being an Air Force veteran, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to lean that direction if you mm -hmm. don't mind. Got it. I, You're a little biased. I am quite biased. Yeah. yeah. Yes, I am. And Phil, you, I interrupted you when I asked that question, so go ahead and make it, a comment, sir. And, it's, and uh, it's rough to say what's the best because there were so many things there. But what I was impressed when we went through the uh, museum, big, and as the group would go, some would stop to see the plane and that, and then you didn't know which way to go. Mm. We had volunteers all over They'd say, you go to your right, you go to your left. They went straight mm. on there. I was just impressed with mm. all of the uh, volunteers that they Incredible. had. Yeah, the and people was what most impressed people. you. Yes. Great, Phil. Yeah. Gil, what about you, most impressive? Well, the, the World War II was, uh, was the most expansive, I thought, and the beautiful. The others were, were not only functional, but they were very, uh, you might say, respectful. I thought the Vietnam Wall was something to do. Yeah, very yeah. remarkable. I've had a chance to see the wall. The Korean War Memorial is incredible as well. Well, that too, that because, yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was my second tour of the Navy. Right. And uh, yeah, courtesy of the Navy, I got to see uh, half of the world, you know, from right. the East Coast to Alaska and all the way across yeah. the Pacific, all the islands, and then end up in, uh, you know, getting frostbitten in, in Korea. It was cold right. there. It was right. cold. Well, it sounds like you guys were enjoying a bit of a... Um, a reward for having endured such difficult uh, circumstances in your military service. Sounds like everything was very well organized. You were very well taken care of. Uh, what I'm hearing is this is just the trip of a lifetime that you would hope other veterans would get to experience. And we'll come back and talk a little bit more about this and talk more about maybe the meaning, because I could tell okay. that some of it was a little hard to be around. And 
Let's talk a little bit about how some of these memorials may have brought up some of your experiences in service. I want to just acknowledge real quickly here to Vincent from San Ramon has asked a question. Thank you, Vincent. And actually, we'll get your question here a little bit later in the show uh, when we'll show you a sneak preview, more video footage of the coming home experience. So thank you, Vincent, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in to the show tonight. We're talking about a very important topic. Uh, if you're out there with your own experiences about honor flight or ask a question for the panel, please call. We encourage you to connect with us. We'd love to hear from you. We have Gil, Phil, and Bill, you know, the, the, the Gil, Phil, and Bill show happening tonight, but we'd love to have you participate as well. So call us right now at 925-313-1170. Our phone lines are open. Next up, please enjoy Scuttlebutt, our newest segment where we deliver some recent headlines in the news. Enjoy. This is Scuttlebutt. I'm Nathan Johnson. And I'm Sergeant Hogwash. Last June, President Trump signed landmark legislation known as the VA Mission Act of 2018. That makes dramatic improvements to how veterans receive community care provided outside of the VA. Given this, the VA thought it would be useful to address when veterans should use local urgent care centers versus emergency departments. For life-threatening emergencies, they require a visit to your closest emergency department, a minor injury or illness that does not appear to be life-threatening and cannot wait until the following day should be treated at an urgent care center. For acute symptoms such as sinus infections, sore throats, rashes, low back pain, or urinary tract infections, veterans should go to urgent care centers, whereas you should go to the emergency department for incidents like a heart attack, sudden severe pain, or loss of consciousness. In other words, a condition that can permanently endanger a veteran's life. You can learn more about this program by visiting missionact.va.gov. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper announced Friday that the Army and Marines will now offer courtesy deployments to civilians interested in military service but who aren't yet sure if it's a good fit for them. The program is designed to give those hard up for combat a taste for what military service is like in places like Afghanistan and other hot spots around the globe. Former Secretary of Defense General Mattis was the mind behind the program. Before departing the administration earlier this year, he reportedly asked his underlings, with tears in my eyes, please ensure that this program is kept alive. It's the only way that our civilian counterparts can truly appreciate what it's like to try and defecate after eating MREs for three days straight. A classified pilot program was launched earlier this year, which comprised a 13-person squad of civilians and included a variety of basic military activities, like substantial homoerotic horseplay, skating out of as much work as humanly possible, drinking water mixed with dirt and calling it coffee, and listening to staff NCOs ramble on and on in school circles about how to keep your spouse from cheating on you and spending all your money. Upon returning home from deployment earlier this year, they each indicated that they felt extremely confused about why they were so eager to deploy initially, couldn't wait to leave beginning the day they landed, and now miss it every day. They also shared with reporters that they aren't sure who they are anymore, Am I a veteran? Am I a civilian? Am I both? During a welcome home ceremony, members of a local veterans group were quick to inform them that they were neither, yet both, and to go and figure it the hell out like we had to. The nation's first underwater veterans memorial opened recently to divers in Florida. The nonprofit Brighter Future Florida led the campaign to complete the memorial. They said, this underwater exhibit featuring our nation's heroes will also help sustain marine life in our Gulf waters by serving as an artificial reef. A representative in Florida said they were celebrating the momentous day and added, most importantly, we're honoring our heroes with an indelible legacy that will be admired for generations. This treasure of the Gulf will forever remind us of their sacrifices and their service to our country. Dr. Hayward Matthews began pursuing the idea of an underwater memorial nearly 10 years ago as a way to honor service members and serve as a therapeutic dive site for disabled veterans suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and trauma. An additional 12 statues will be installed in 2020. And, and that's, that's the, the scuttlebutt. scuttlebutt. If you haven't done so already, we encourage you to connect with us during this live broadcast. Our phone lines are open right now at 925-313-1170. 
So let's continue this conversation and now focus on the meaning of these trips with respect to military service, loss, and the symbolism of the memorials. Gentlemen, welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we talked about the bus ride and the police escort and the great hotels and great food, but now let's bring the conversation a little bit closer to our military service because many of these are memorials and probably have some connections to maybe your own experiences in service. We talked about which ones were our favorites, um, but which of the memorials do you feel gave you maybe the, the closest, the, you know, the closest emotion uh, to your military experience? Mm. Kind yeah. of a difficult thing well, to talk know, about. I had been to Washington several times uh, in my past life, but never to the, during the timeline of the World War II. So visiting that was very meaningful to me because it covered all of the people that were involved in one mm -hmm. way or another. And must be aware that Mr. Kilroy was there too. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so he, what is Mr. Kilroy, Bill? Well, he's a cartoon character that followed off the service people all around the country and all around the world, as a matter of fact. This so, is a this is a, uh, a humorous cartoon character that was used yeah, back in World War II. Yeah, it's what it's supposed to be. Okay. Yeah. Kilroy was here. Kilroy was here. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. some of this connected you to some of the funny experiences then. Oh, well, we that did you have, have fun. Then. And yes, yeah. we did have some of that too. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think the most meaningful for me was a Korean one you know, mm -hmm. because. It kind of made you think about the guys that didn't come back. Mm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I don't know, I, I seem to remember more about them mm. than in World War II. World War II was over such a longer period, and uh, it, it, it didn't seem to hit home. I, was, I guess I was still 17, 18, and 19 years old. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, Korea was different. Yeah. Well, the thing, the thing about World War II is it was happening in a lot of different places, too, wasn't it? Oh, oh yeah. And Korea yeah. was on one peninsula. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, World War II. I was in, what, the, the Atlantic Ocean, Alaska, and then some of the islands before the, they dropped that bomb. Thank mm -hmm. God for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Saved yeah. us, uh, yeah. a lot of us, you know. Yeah. yeah. I was very sorry uh, for the Vietnam wa Wall. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't like the way they... They did it in the side of the hill. Mm. They didn't have any uh, benches to sit down in, mm. no water fountain in that. Mm. It's like when they all came back, mm. that nobody wanted to talk to them. And I thought they could have done a much better yeah. job on the memorial. So you, the, the most impressive. you felt a little bit like maybe what we felt like when Vietnam vets came home, that yes. we could have done a little bit better for them. We could, yes. We could have been a little bit more thoughtful about what that experience was yes. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. One of the places we visited was, uh, was sponsored and paid for by a, lo a local guy out of San Ramon. Uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Hmm. Uh, he just passed away here in the last few months. Oh, the bearing. Bearing, yes, bearing. it was. And it was really wonderful to see what he contributed to the, this pretty good sized wing of the museum that okay. we visited. So there's a bit of a local um, oh, effect to some of this trip. Very this much trip so. Then, is very it, much so. You got to see what some of the local uh, ph ph philanthropic philanthropic uh, folks were able to yeah. influence back there in Washington, D.C. Tell us a little bit about this, because I'm not familiar with it. It was it part of a museum? Yeah, oh, it was part of a museum, and they had uh, oh, the flag, I think, an old flag under construction, reconstruction, yeah. was there. There's, I remember, some Jeeps. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, just a, a number of meaningful yeah. exhibits. How, what yeah. do you think is the intent of these memorials in terms of bringing any type of healing or connection to uh, our experiences in the military or to each other? Well, I, I think it was a, as a symbol that it was for all, all of the folks that participated in it, each one in their own, in their own sphere, you know, World War II, Korea, Iwo Jima, and that sort of thing. To each one of us, it was a slightly different, you know. But I think I was so impressed about the expanse of the World War II because it, it showed all of the states and th that contributed to mm -hmm. the, the whole effort, you know. Mm -hmm. It was, uh, 
I, I think uh, somebody put a lot of thought into that one. Mm -hmm. The others, I think, were straightforward. The wall for uh, Vietnam, the men coming out of the, out of the woods there in Korea, yeah. those are symbolic of that era and that place, that you know. Yeah. yeah. Now, Phil, what do you th what do you think in terms of not only your your perception of the 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 memorials and their significance, but also what do you think about someone who never served in the military? What might those memorials mean for them? Well, there were several people when we were there, looking at <clears throat> the World War II war wall, and they were so impressed. So was I, mm -hmm. of all the names mm -hmm. on there, all the way down. Mm -hmm. That uh, and I forget what someone said there. That one name represent like ten people, mm -hmm. and that wall it was so impressive on there yeah. that the only thing is yeah. it, it would bring tears. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yeah. It brings tears to your eyes when Absolutely. you see this. When you understand that there's an actual human being behind that loss, right? Yeah, several, uh, several. There, yeah. Um, yeah. fellow brothers and sisters. Yes. And I, I think this helps. I hope it helps the younger people realize yeah. what went, what yeah. we all went through on that. On there. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, probably for those that have never served, and maybe to the younger generation to to look back at history a little bit, you know. And to see, this is what our, my, see, my father and my grandfather did. Mm -hmm. Appreciate the sacrifices of the generations before yeah. us. Yeah, absolutely. I would think as someone who served in Iraq that I would, would want to go back and see these memorials just to understand the size and, the, and just the incredible amount of sacrifice and contribution that occurred during World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now the thing is, now, what, what do we do about the, the young men now that in the last, say, five or ten years that have been in Afghanistan, Iraq, and places like that? Right. There's no welcome home for them anymore. You know, there was hardly any welcome for us coming back from well, Korea. You know what's going to happen in the future, though. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. may be. It just could be. Yeah. 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 Um, that's right. Gentlemen, we have some photos here. That, so we just watched some video, but this is actually, these are some photos from the trip that Phil took. So let's take a look at uh, photo number one. And this is everyone sitting together uh, in the wheelchairs, it looks like. Is this in front of the World War II Memorial, or where are we yeah. at here, Phil? Yeah, that's the World War II Memorial, yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and was this just kind of a moment to pause and get a group photo, or what yeah, was happening yeah. here? Uh, yeah. Because of the background mm -hmm. and that. They okay. lined us up. Yeah. Okay. We all got involved with and, uh, of this nature. Okay. They wanted to just see everyone together. And, yeah. And they, yeah. Now, now, photo number five is another view of the World War II Memorial. It, yep. it looks like it looks like a beautiful fountain. Now, there's a lot of water features to this yeah. memorial. Oh, yeah. What is the significance of the water in, in this memorial? I think it's probably the only memorial that has water. Mm -hmm. It is. Correct? Yeah. Is, does that represent at all maybe the naval involvement in that war, or did they say? Uh, I don't recall. I'm not sure. It was maybe, maybe just a way to bring kind of peace and serenity, I guess, to. Yeah. Well, worldwide. It was worldwide. Okay. Water so maybe so. Yeah. Yeah. But the one that impressed me. 10. Photo number 10. The Lincoln Memorial. Okay. I have seen it on TV. Uh huh. On that. But when I got up close to it, I never realized the pillars, how high they are, how big the statue is. Wow. And how many steps it takes to get up to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are a lot of steps. It, a lot of steps. It, it was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I was Very so serene. impressed. Such a big statue. Hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah, the one thing from the Lincoln Memorial, you look one end of the mall, you see the the uh, the Washington Monument. Okay. Yeah. My grandson and I walked around to the back, and we got a spectacular view of the Memorial Bridge across the Potomac, looking back into the city. Mm. It was nine. it was amazing. Mm. Nine. nine. Picture number nine. nine. You. Okay, we're at the Lincoln Memorial that's what you just described, Gil. Is, so for, this is for a viewpoint, and, and this is who? You and your guardian? Yeah, is it Phil? that's my grandson. Okay, and so you can see, just as Gil mentioned, all the way across the, uh, the mall, 
Mm -hmm. And uh, in the Washington Monument in the background yeah. there. Very yeah. impressive. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really beautiful. Yeah. Now, I know what number six is, so I'm, but I'm going to play dumb here <laughs> and see if you guys can tell me what number six is. Uh, it looks like, again, another group photo, and you're standing in front of what? What is this? That's the uh, Iwo Jima Memorial. Iwo Jima. It the Marines on top of Mount we Suribachi. It was being renovated when we were there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we didn't get a chance other than to see the oh, okay. su superstructure, wooded superstructure around okay. it. Okay. So, Phil, you got quite a treat then. Oh, yeah. You got to see that, it. That's in the front and there. And that, that, that statue, too, is yeah. huge. Yeah. And there. It looks huge. So, it, number four looks pretty funny here. Um, <laughs> what, are you doing, what are you doing in a dive suit, Phil? <laughs> and, and who's that short guy standing next to you? I, I uh, think one of the bearing, uh, in the bearing museums. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, it was. A, I, uh, I had to have a picture with that on there because I had tried one of these on uh, aboard ship. Really? Wow. On there. Wow, that's and, incredible. And uh, I tried that's it on. Heavy. But then I always say, that's me in the red. Mm. Wow. <laughs> so you don't get yeah. mixed up, you know. Wow, wow. But it, it was just a fun picture. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a hard helmet diving suit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm really grateful that we got to see some of these pictures and see some of these videos. Um, and we're going to have Tom on in a little bit to talk about the experience of being a guardian. Um, what, what else do you want to share about this experience? It seems like it's a, a very unique once in a lifetime experience. If someone else was to come up to you and say, hey, what do you think about this honor flight? Do you think I should do this? What would you tell them? Oh, oh. God. One thing I would tell them, that the California one is unique in a way, that they only have a number of people on a trip for one bus load. We got in conversation with this group out of Texas that two and three buses, and they all got lost from each other, and it was a very confusing situation. And they lost a lot of the meaning of the trip. Mm, I uh, see. Yeah. So a little too big and yeah. a little too disorganized, but, but California I, has it in smaller bite-sized pieces. Under control, yes, it okay. is. Yeah. So you would tell someone who is interested in it that go for it. It's going to be well organized, and everything's going to be coordinated, and you'll enjoy yourself. Oh, I think uh, I know uh, yeah. so. Yes, yeah. sir. What about you? Phil? I would tell them to try to get your son or your grand. I spent more time than those few days with my grandson on there, morning and night. Mm. And we just bonded. Mm. We were very close anyway, but somehow or another, it just felt just great. Yeah. Yeah, well, if, the, if your companion or guardian or whatever they call him was a family member, as it turned out, it was my grandson, which is actually Chris's son. Uh, he and I uh, had never been uh, real close here at home, but this gave us a few days to be together, and we went out one night, and we walked up and down the, uh, around uh, Crystal City. That's where the hotel was, and we went out, and we had a beer together. And that was something I had never done with him before. We had a chance to talk. And uh, by golly, you know, that was really neat. That was really neat to get together with a grandson like that. He's over 21, so yeah. he's in a bar legally. So you yeah, bought the lucky. first round. <laughs> His father. Yeah, we forgot to mention, Gil, that your, your uh, son is Chris Verdugo, yes. who is the director of Veterans Voices. So, and, oh, OK. Uh, and so that's important to mention. And then your grandson, uh, who went on the flight with you, is Chris's son. Is that yes. right? Yes, that's right, yeah. So we've got, we got a VIP on the show tonight. Okay. No. Mr. Uh, <laughs> not Wilfred quite. Hugo not here. quite. Everyone's a VIP, as a matter of fact. Yes, so yes, sir. Coming on. He's in he the shadows playing. over there, but he'll be joining us. <laughs> and, you know, I forgot to ask, where did these T-shirts come from? Was this a, uh, did you get this shirt on your way over there and, and you got to wear it the whole couple time? Weeks, or? A couple weeks prior to the mm -hmm. trip, they gave us not only shirts, but jackets, bags, and what not to, it must be used on the trip. Okay, and you've got a jacket right in front of there, in front of you there. Do you yeah. want to hold that jacket up? That's a windbreaker to... That is, I think... Oh, and Gil's got his as well. <laughs> so, honor flight jackets. So, what's the red one and what's the blue one? Well, the blue is for guardians. Yeah. Okay. Red is for the veterans. For the veterans, okay. Yep. I like that. 
Mm. Very sharp. So they took very good care of you guys. Well, gentlemen, we have a, a question here that we'll, we'll get to, and then we have just about a minute left. Uh, someone anonymous asks, have you shared your experience with the people you live with? So that's a good question. When you oh, came yeah. back from the honor flight, or I'm not sure if they're talking about your military experience, but we have just a minute here. Did, did the honor flight help you share some of your military experiences with your family? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes it did. Definitely. Yes, it did. And what experiences did you share that maybe you had not shared before? Well, we had Bozo in mind. <laughs> And that was kind of cute. And then this cop that came up from the rear and also mm -hmm. from the front. Mm -hmm. We had good, good people to guide us through the now, traffic I, I think the most impressive thing is that the attention that they paid to us. Mm. They, <laughs> we were VIPs actually in that bus mm -hmm. going through traffic, zooming from one place to the other mm -hmm. in the hotels, in the welcome home and all that. That's, yeah. uh, that was something. Right. You felt special. And yep. it was nice to share that with your family. I bet they were happy for you. Phil, were they happy yeah. to see you and hear about your, your experiences? Yes, uh, but I had a lot of younger uh, people ask me, well, what was World War II like oh, okay. on that? And I thought that was great yeah. because it made them interested. Yeah, very important. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah, what a great way for them to ask that question, too. And you can yeah. tell a few things, you yeah. know. But uh, it's the younger people yeah. should know what went on. Well, you guys are living pieces of history. I mean, we can learn about World War II only by asking you what it was like. After that, we can only read about it in books. Well, gentlemen, we're out of time, but we're going to come back and talk to Tom. You'll be on stage here, and we'll talk about the experience of being a guardian. So. We'll, we'll continue this conversation. Lots more to be discussed. Okay, right. Next up, we're going to hear from the experiences of Tom Meyer, who is Bill Meyer's son and was a guardian for their honor flight trip. We'll be right back. Stay with us. There we go. Wow. Whoa. Welcome, Tom, to the show. Tom, you were a guardian on Honor Flight, and we want to hear about your experience. But you've got to sit in the corner there and hear about these three gentlemen share. Um, so go ahead and tell us who told you about this idea and, and convinced you to make a trip back to Washington, D.C. to see these memorials. Well, first, Nathan, I want to thank you for the opportunity to encourage uh, pe people like myself, sons, daughters, grandsons to take their veterans, if they in fact have a veteran, to this trip. It is a, such a memorable thing. My dad and I have worked together since 1977 in a printing business. And this was just over the top. You know, I mean, we got to spend three days together and it was just uh, absolutely a unique situation for us. Uh, but I first found out about it, as my dad mentioned earlier, about our uncle that went on the trip. And uh, he said, Bill, take a shot. And so we were at breakfast one morning, and he said, hey, Tom, let's do this. What do you think? And I said, well, what are you getting me into, Dad? I don't know about this thing. <laughs> Going to Washington, D.C., I've got two businesses to run. But sure, if you want me to go, I'm there for you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> So we, don't, we know how Phil ended up in the military, right? Didn't know very much about it, but did, how much did you know about the Guardian Role. Did you know that your job was going to be to help escort these participants around, or what did you understand? Yes, yes absolutely. Uh, there was, as my dad mentioned, there was an orientation um, about two weeks prior to the trip. And at that orientation, they show you the wheelchairs, make sure you know how to drive a wheelchair. Uh, they give you these bags that you can take, as you were mentioned. Everything you take on the trip fits in this bag must, or must it doesn't go. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, there is no carry-on luggage. But um, it was a great orientation. 
And once we started getting on the trip, it was just a fantastic time. And I think it's uh, highly recommended for anyone, even if you don't have uh, family that is a veteran, you can still take a veteran with you, you know, as being a guardian. It does cost you a little bit of money, but it's gonna be the best thousand dollars you ever spent to see a tour of Washington, D.C. Yeah. in the manner that these guys are treated in VIPs. Yeah, so it sounds like an incredibly remarkable experience, not only for oh. the veterans who you get to participate, but also for the guardians as well. So absolutely, give us a little bit of an understanding of, uh, of what a guardian is going to see. Are you gonna to get to see all the memorials? Uh, are you gonna to get to have the same kind of experiences? Um, is it more limited for you or is it just the same? No, it is exactly the same. The only mm -hmm. difference about that is, is number one, you're responsible for your veteran. Mm -hmm. You okay. go, if the veteran is not feeling well and he wants to stay on the bus, you're staying with the veteran. Okay. Uh, if he gets off, you're with the veteran in the wheelchair, or if he can walk, you still take a wheelchair with you in case he needs to sit down. Okay. Uh, but it's, uh, it, it is just a fantastic trip and it warned, got me going into this honor flights thing. I've been on three trips now. Okay. I've, I've been guardian for two, one for my dad and one for actually two uh, Korean uh, veterans that were able to take care of themselves, but they still have to have a veteran with, uh, excuse me, a guardian Assigned. with them. Assigned. Assigned, okay. correct. So and you continue to volunteer. Why, yes. why did you continue to volunteer? I mean, it, it, Bill got to go, you didn't, Bill didn't get to go back with you, but you continued to go with other veterans. Because it's so rewarding. You know, the, the first time it was all about dad. Mm -hmm. The second time it was all about just seeing the veterans' responses to the memorials mm -hmm. to me. And it was so rewarding to see their faces just shine when they see the stuff. How, why are people doing this for us? Mm -hmm. It's just remarkable mm -hmm. uh, because you did so much for us and thank you for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the third trip I went as assistant flight leader and I was a kind of look at them, you know, being responsible for all of them, just like the flight leader and the nurse. And uh, I was watching the attitudes, and I have never seen such a group of old, wonderful people <laughs> having such a great time with absolutely no attitudes but mm. positive. Mm. It was just a fantastic trip, and I'm looking forward to my next one. Mm. Mm. You, you mentioned that you get to see the way that they react to some of these memorials. How mm -hmm. do you, what, what are some of the experiences that you've seen in regards to the way veterans do react, are, are some of, you mentioned some of them are overjoyed. Amazed, mm -hmm. uh, the size of them, as you were mentioning with the Lincoln Memorial, mm -hmm. that, that blew me away too. I was just like, whoa, his hand is as big as a car, <laughs> practically. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and then the tears. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, I, there was some veterans and even some guardians on my last trip that uh, I consoled because she lost a brother in the uh, Vietnam War mm. and they were looking for her, his name and they didn't oh. find it, but uh, mm. okay. she was very emotional during that time. Yeah, so. so some of the guardians are having some of their own unique experiences then visiting these memorials yeah, as They well. do. They Important do. to mention that, yeah. Do you have to be a veteran to be a guardian or is there any oh. specific requirement? It, the only requirement is you can know how to drive a wheelchair. Yeah. Uh, you're strong enough to maybe maneuver the wheelchair in and off of the bus. You might be, you know, asked to help that occasionally. Yeah. Have a good attitude and a thousand dollars. Now, I would imagine that you would probably be up later than some, maybe up earlier than some. You're, this you, has got to be quite an exhausting task to be a guardian. It on these really trips. isn't that bad. Hmm. You know, I mean, yes, you do get up. We, I think we were getting up at like 5 o'clock, 5 30 in the morning. Well, both of us were. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and you, but okay. you're responsible for getting your veteran down to breakfast. Yeah. Then you have two hours. Or the bus leaves at 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, right. Huh? So you, have, you can go back to your room, you can do a few things, but you want to be on, on that bus at 8 o'clock. Yeah. You don't want to delay the, sh the show because they have right. a very stringent schedule to stick yeah. to to see all those memorials. Yeah, so a lot of responsibility, but very rewarding. Absolutely. And for some guardians, you actually get to experience the memorials yourself. Yeah. So what would you say to someone who might be considering then being a guardian for an honor flight? Maybe it's a grandfather or a grandmother, or maybe they just want to be a volunteer and help a veteran with this experience. The ride of a lifetime, hmm. uh, especially for the veterans and for the guardians. The first trip is a little bit interesting because you don't know what you're getting into. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it gets better as you go on, and it's a—it's uh, just so rewarding.
to do it and just do it because I I would suggest you do it mm -hmm. because it's you might have seen it but you just don't see it like this right uh, you know on the bus with the police escort and the, it's a, I think it's a canine actually that follows up on the tail and oh, Kilroy okay. and well Kilroy's at World War II <laughs> Dan. I gotta learn more about this Kilroy character yeah yep he's yeah. he's hidden you have to know where to look for him but uh, it is. Gil's going to write it down for me. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to draw the picture. He's going to show you what Kilroy looks like. That's but, Kilroy. I'm sure you've seen this. <laughs> oh, okay. So it's a, it's a bit of an uh, eyeballs and a nose character. Yeah, yeah, hanging over the wall. Kilroy looking Boy, out. If, if this is what helped you guys win the war, then I, you know, I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to suggest that we have this on our uniforms for all of our current military. That's so perfect. That's, that's Kilroy right there. Kilroy was here. Yes, he was. Kilroy was here. The days before YouTube. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, uh, is there? We just we got to wrap it up here. But is, was there anything that these gentlemen left out about this trip that you think might be important to mention? We have just a few seconds. Some of the uh, uh, memorials he left of the American History Museum was a bearing. Uh, exhibit and that was absolutely fantastic. Okay. They put us in an elevator that they put uh, helicopters in wow. to take us up and down. Incredible. So Big is this room? Incredible. Oh yeah, wow. easily. You can put wow. a car in there, a, a full-size big wow. car, several. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for being on the show tonight. And there's lots more to talk about on our flight, but we've covered quite a bit of it, and we ran out of time. Thank you, though, for thank your service. You. Thank, you, thank you for talking thank about you. Honor Flights. I think you've inspired a lot of people to really check this program out. I hope so. Yeah. And thank you to our audience for tuning into the show tonight, helping us cover this very important topic. We've had a meaningful conversation with our panel, and we hope that you've enjoyed it. But before we go, we'd like to share a few events and resources in our community. The Virtual Wall is an online version of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., with a personal memorial for each American military casualty of the Vietnam War. The memorial pages have photographs and personal tributes sent to and by relatives and friends. Visit virtualwall.org. The Honor Flight Bay Area hub covers California from the San Francisco Bay Area to the Oregon border. Visit honorflightbayarea.org to learn more and to apply to take the trip. Those interested in becoming a guardian can also apply there. The Honor Flight National Network is the national nonprofit organization that started it all. Learn the history of the organization, other programs they offer, and download documents at honorflight.org. To rewatch tonight's episode, check back on our homepage later this week or check your cable provider's schedule for rebroadcast times. You can also watch this episode and many others on our YouTube channel, Veterans Voices of Contra Costa, so be sure to subscribe. Our next live broadcast will be Monday, September 16th at 7 p.m. Be sure to tune in. We'll talk about the Brady Handgun Act. This is Veterans Voices of Contra Costa County signing off, wishing you all a relaxing evening, and for the veterans out there, gents, hoo-yah, <laughs> hoo hoo-yah, and semper fi. Then perfect. All right.